So the title of this is Don't Carry Your Burdens from 2023 into 2024. You know, in ministry, work, relationships, school, all of us carry burdens personally, you know, throughout the year sometimes. And hopefully we maintain it. Burdens are like laundry, right? What happens if you don't do laundry? It piles up and it's stinky, right? And you know, and the, and the bigger it is, the harder it is to be motivated to wash it all. I came here last night and uh, I need to think about, maybe that's why this is in my mind subconsciously. I came here last night and Bobby literally had like four, you know, baskets of laundry he was doing and he was all in I mean Bobby is the man I was so like wow and you know and I'm sure Anna helped as well but you know the it, it was just wild to see it and look I'm gonna tell you something real men do laundry that <laughs> on But listen, we need to not allow the burdens from 2023 or even burdens that we've carried for days, weeks, months, or years to keep us from effectively ministering to people this year. Amen. Look, there's no limitations except the limitations that we allow the enemy to put on us because we open the door. But we're shutting the door because 2023 and all that is in the past. It's gone. It's gone. Yes. And you know, you hear people talk about how difficult a year was. And maybe the reality is that it was very difficult for you. But whether it was difficult or not, the fact of the matter is that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is the day. Stop living in yesterday. Start living in today, walking with Jesus without anything pulling you back. I don't care what it is, friend. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Philippians 3 Verses 12 through 14, Paul says this, Not that I have already attained, or, are you listening? Yes. Already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold or take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Right? He's the great initiator. You can't take hold of Christ unless Christ has taken a hold of you. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended or taken hold of, but one thing I do. Everybody say that. One thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and Christ Jesus. Listen, without any goals initiated by God, the goals we set for ourselves lose their value in eternity. Because the goals we set, your goal might be today, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I need to take a shower, I need to do my laundry, I need to go to work. Those goals are valuable and important and, and even important to God. But if you're going to be eternity minded, that's not something that you can make happen. You and I have to allow the Holy Spirit to initiate his work within us 
and be willing to keep in step with the Spirit so that as we follow Him, we do not get stuck in today or yesterday's problems, but we say, I know who's called me, who's chosen me, who's ordained me, and I'm walking with Him into my destiny and purpose. Listen, burdens become magnetized to us when we lose sight of where our focus should be. It's easy. If I'm not focused on Jesus, then all the little problems, right? The little foxes, right? They can destroy what God's doing in us and we start living in guilt, condemnation, and fear. And that's when the enemy puts a hook in us and we start realizing that I'm not being effective. I'm not being a witness. Listen, sharing the gospel, doing evangelism, preaching the word of God, all of these things you cannot do without being in right relationship with the Lord. He does not want you to carry burdens that Jesus already paid the price for. People who move beyond their burdens are taken over by their upward calling in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it is hard to fulfill the goals that the Lord has set for us in our lives if we are allowing our past to dictate our future. Don't be stuck in the past. I had a failed marriage. I had a failed relationship. I thought I was going to marry this person. I, I thought this job, I was going to go to this country and that open door. This financial, you know, thing did not work out. From whatever the situation is, you have to understand that the goals the Lord sets for you, you have to keep in step. You cannot allow present burdens to weigh you down. Many think that a new calendar day or year helps us forget the past so that we can move forward in life. But without taking responsibility for our thoughts, words, and actions, we can move forward in the flesh, but not in the spirit. And if the spirit of the Lord is not leading us and we are being led by our flesh, it doesn't lead to a good destiny. It doesn't lead to peace. It doesn't lead to joy. I'm telling you, you've got to seek the Lord. You've got to hear the voice of the Lord. You've got to learn how to be a man or a woman of prayer. And you have to train your ear to hear what the Spirit says. You have to keep your face and the word of God. You have to walk in faithfulness when nobody else is doing it. Otherwise, it's too easy for you and I to give in to the cares and the weights and burdens of this world and be bogged down and become completely ineffective, but still call ourselves a Christian. The more we resist submitting in our flesh, the more difficult it becomes to hear the Lord's voice, hunger for his presence, and walk in the spirit to fulfill our destiny and calling. You know, one of the difficult things Christians face is trying to not allow our personal burdens get in the way of ministering to others. You may have had a dream that God gave you I was going to become a business owner. I was going to be a missionary in this country. No matter what it is. Uh, I was going to go to this school. And then it doesn't seem to work out. You don't see the financial provision. You don't see the open door. Well, listen. If you're not seeking the Lord, why do you expect God to do something for you? What do I mean? That God doesn't want to do it? No, not at all. He very well may desire to do that, but he doesn't see you and I as benefiting from moving forward in life if we cannot take the step, the first step to walk with him. It's so vitally important. 
right? It's like the, I mean, this is obvious. People say, well, I've never seen the sick healed. And I say, well, do you ever pray for the sick? Right? Yeah, I prayed once, like 10 years ago, for this person. It was amazing, but nothing happened. That doesn't sound very amazing. My point is, if you're going to pray for people to be healed on a regular basis, guess what? You're going to see people healed. Why? Because you're the next Benny Hinn or Bill Johnson or whatever? No, because you are believing God at his word and putting it into practice. And that practice is teaching you how to play in the game. Amen? You know, as a missionary, I never want to say God told me something for others unless I know my heart is in the right place. There is a measure of the fear of the Lord in my life when I stand up in front of you. That's what motivates me to pray. Not fear as in I'm scared that God's going to judge me and beat me down or something like that. But it's a holy fear that I love him so much and he's done so much for me. I'm motivated by that love that when I stand up in front of people, I don't want to just say something because I can say, speak something well or say something to twist your emotions and get a reaction from you. That's not my goal. My goal is for you to trust that what we speak to you is something you put into practice. And when you learn how to hear God for yourself, more and more and more, you become so addicted to it that you become confident, not full of pride, that God speaks to you and you know how to follow his voice. My sheep hear my voice. My spiritual confidence in Christ will always become confused by fleshly pride. When we speak or share with others, it must be filtered by our freedom in Christ. And so, honestly, I don't want to go out in public and do anything unless I have something some type of seeking first the Lord. Sometimes I get to spend hours with the Lord. Other times, it's, it's not so long. But I do something. And then I leave. And then if I can, I try to do more that day. But I don't want there to be a day or a week go by where I'm not being consistent with the Lord. Because that affects my spiritual health my marriage, my family, my ministry, everything we do becomes affected by how we personally seek the Lord. And if you won't do it for yourself, do it for those around you, but ultimately seek the Lord because you know his motivation towards you. Yeah. Let's look in uh, Matthew 11, verse 25 to 30. Now Jesus said, at that time, he answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent, and you have revealed them to babes, children. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things, say all things, have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me. Oh, this is beautiful. All you who labor and are heavy laden or burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, take my burden, upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, the hidden things that Jesus is talking about is the simplicity of knowing him by faith. This is the hidden thing because when he's talking to large crowds of people, not everybody is getting what he's talking about. 
They're willing to receive the benefits of his power, but they're not willing to release their burdens to walk with him in intimacy. That's a powerful thought. See, Jesus didn't work miracles, signs, wonders, healing, because he wanted to impress people. No, he wants relationship. And so the entire purpose is that you don't know about God anymore, but that you know God. God is looking for childlike faith, not childish faith, that trusts his word and obeys him. So if you want to be a mature man or woman of God, you've got to learn how to crawl by faith. You've got to learn how to walk by faith. You've got to learn how to drive by faith, especially if you live in Davao City. If, you know, many easily get caught up talking about the Antichrist without talking about Christ. We had this conversation the other day. I wish we could go into the depth that we went into, but here's the deal. I hear everybody talking about wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes. The Antichrist is coming. The end is coming. The rapture is going to take place. Amen. But do you wake up in the morning with Jesus on your lips? Do you go throughout the day with Jesus on your heart? Do you live, breathe, eat, sleep, drink Jesus? Do you know the Lord? Do you walk with him and talk with him and hear him say about you what he loves to share and speak over you? See, my friend, if we would be more caught up with Jesus, we would be more optimistic for revival and awakening to take place around us, and we would stop looking for the Antichrist to deliver us from this earth because we just want to go be with Jesus. What do you mean that the Antichrist deliver us? He comes and fulfills in Scripture what has already been said about him. He does his part. Friend, I want to do my part. And my part is I don't care when he's coming. I am ready to go with Jesus at any point because I want to walk with him. And I want to destroy the works of darkness through the power of the blood of Jesus and not be waiting for some type of deliverance when I've already been delivered in my heart. Oh yeah, I want to go be with Jesus in heaven just as much of all, as all you do. But my friend, what are we going to do with all these people who don't know the Lord? Are we so concerned about them that we're willing to lay our own lives down? Paul the Apostle said, I wish I would be a curse just so that my people... Wow! I wish that I could be condemned to hell in order that others would know the Lord. Who would say something like that? Somebody who's been delivered by burdens and who is walking in the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? If our vision is blinded by what is around us, we stop resting and start working without purpose. You know, what yokes or what burdens from the past are you carrying from last year or even before that into this, this year? And let me ask you, are you walking under the yoke, the burden of the Lord? Because he says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. In other words, the yoke that you're bearing, the burden that you're bearing, if it's not the burden of the Lord, it's not easy. It weighs you down. It causes you to become a slave. It causes you to interpret God outside of Scripture. And therefore, you don't understand that he is a loving, gentle, and kind father. Instead, we make up a God in our mind that doesn't exist according to our flesh. But if we walk with him, we say, Lord, I want to see what you see. I want to hear what you hear. I want to feel what you feel. I want to taste what you taste and think what you think. I want to be so full of your love. So what is a burden? Well, John Spacey says this. A burden, listen to this, so powerful. A burden is a harsh internal 
or external challenge faced by an individual. This is similar to a life problem or an obstacle, except that burdens include things that are internal to your mind, such as guilt. A burden indicates a problem that is excessive, such as preventing an individual from being productive and fulfilled. Here's some scriptures about burdens. 1 John 2.16 For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. You see, we invite burdens internally when we do not control the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride that comes from us. You are responsible for what's happening within your heart, your mind, your emotions, and will to be submitted to God and allowing Him to disciple and equip you in purity and holiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Now, all the verses I'm using are from the New King James, but this one is from the King James Version. Wherefore, seeing we are, we also are compassed about with such a, or surrounded about by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Sierra, when you were a runner and, and you were running on the track, how far would you run your farthest run? Yeah, how many miles? 5K on the track, 6K. Okay, so 5 or 6K. And so when you did that, were you trying to wear the heaviest clothing that you could find? <laughs> were you putting uh, weights an on your ankles and your forearms? Or were, were you putting something over your neck that you could carry like a bag so that when you want to stop and eat somewhere? Or No, of course not. No, if we're going to run our race, we got to get rid of all the weights and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Beset. I'm going to explain what that means in a moment. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Patience is the key. If you've not arrived and become the greatest man or woman of God that you think you could be yet, well, calm down, be at peace. You will get there by the grace of God. Looking unto Jesus, this is where our focus should be. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, the joy set before Jesus, he knew the long-term goal. He endured the cross. Despising the shame, and is set at the right hand of the Father and the, thro or the throne of God. Listen, a besetting sin is one that we constantly struggle with and toward which we are naturally inclined. So there are sins that when you are born again, you are forgiven of any sin in your life at that moment. And Jesus provides forgiveness for you when you sin in the future. But if you sin in the future as a Christian, you are not sinning as a slave. You are sinning as a son or a daughter. And so if you keep sinning, you forfeit your rights as a son or a daughter and embrace slavery. Remember the prodigal son. And it's easy to lose your identity when you're not walking in intimacy. But see, when we walk with the Lord, then sins do not stick to us. We confess. We repent because we have access, right? What's my favorite scripture verse, fire school ministry students? Matthew 3 verse 8. Produce fruit while keeping with repentance. See, this is good news to you and I. So if you need forgiveness for something, you don't have to call Pastor Arm or Atili Boat in the middle of the night. If you do have to call somebody, call them. Just don't call us, okay? But I'm, I'm joking. You know what I mean? 
But seriously, you have access to the Father. You forget you have access to the Father when sins are weighing you down and you're not releasing them to the Father. Listen to this. Is this making sense? Are you with me? Because we're going to be finished here in three more hours. Other translations refer to sins that beset us as sin that so easily entangles the NIV and sin that just won't let go in the CEV. The Greek word used in this verse means easily ensnaring, like a trap that easily captures a mouse. There are some sins that easily ensnare us. Why do they easily ensnare us? Because they happen by surprise? No. Nobody has ever sinned by accident. All sin is intentional. Deliberate. You say, but what about sins of omission and sins of commission? Well, you can go back to my podcast the last two weeks and hear about how I define part one and two, what is sin. I just taught at the YWAM base a couple weeks ago. And you can understand, but look, we are guilty for our sin. We are responsible to respond to what Jesus has done for us. And if we don't use the provision of what is given to us, that is not our, God's fault. It is our fault. But here's the good news. You don't have to live under guilt, condemnation, and fear. You can walk in absolute freedom. You just have to keep walking with the Lord. Now, there's a couple types of burdens. There's internal burdens, which we struggle with within ourselves, and external burdens. Burdens we struggle with that come from around us, on the outside. Internal burdens. I'm going to read that in just a moment. But I need a volunteer today. I need a small volunteer. Okay? Let me see. Who would be... Sharika. You would be perfect today. Come on up here. Ah, thank you, Lord, for Sharika. What a blessing. Okay, Rika. We've never done this before. You know, Sharika, whenever we travel, and you've been traveling lately, you've been seeing Sharika's pictures, you know. Yeah. You know. Um, we usually, in an international flight, we could check in one to two large luggages, like this one right here, and carry on one luggage. And if we try to take any more luggage, you know, it can be like a couple hundred dollars or more for an international flight. And so if they don't put um, limitations, I think a lot of people would just try and take as much as they can, like Balik buy-in boxes. You know, Filipinos want to take all the stuff back home that they possibly can. Um, and, but here's the danger of too much luggage. It causes the plane to be unbalanced. And when the plane is unbalanced, it's in danger of crashing. Too much weight. Check-in luggage is an example of the burdens that we might be carrying. And so I'm not going to ask you to pick up the luggage. I'm opening the luggage for you today, and all of these shirts are mine. They're all clean. There's no stinky, smelly shirts in here. But I'm going to talk about different internal and external burdens. And every time I mention one, I want you to put on one t-shirt. Okay? So, there's a lot to choose from here. We'll see how far we get. Okay? Are you ready? Yep, you're going to have to put it on. Okay? 
bad habits, and you got to put them on quick, okay? Because Jesus might come at any point. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Yeah, okay. Internal burdens. Okay, so that represents bad habits right there, right? You shouldn't wear a shirt like that. No. Uh, well, it, it fits perfect. Okay, bitterness. These, I'm talking about internal burdens, right? Bitterness. She's doing awesome. Come on, give her a hand clap, you know? This is hard work, you know? Bitterness, resentment. Anybody ever had to deal with that? Boy, that's a horrible internal pain and burden to carry in our lives. Guilt. Yeah, that, that's good. Just keep going. Don't wait on me. Perfect. Guilt. You know, sometimes we try and make guilt look nice, right? But the fact of the matter is, when nobody else is looking, guilt weighs us down. And it makes us not draw near to God. It makes us not have confidence. What about health problems or stress or hopelessness? You know, these are things that affect us. Wow. Looks like you're putting on a little weight there. <laughs> Depression. I've seen people weighed down with depression where it changes their countenance and they're no longer walking with the radiance of Christ, but they walk with their heads down. They're hopeless. Anxiety. Fear. Fear of what other people think. Fear of what tomorrow holds. Fear of not being able to do that which is in our heart to do. Worry. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. But worry controls so many people. Enslaves so many people. Ungodly thoughts, hatred, regret, bad reputation. <laughs> social isolation. Victim, listen, listen, victim mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it burdens will wear you out, make you tired? Won't they? You think, oh, I can handle it. Out of control, anger, lust, perversion, self-pity. Those were all internal burdens. Now we're going to talk about external burdens. Look at how the internal burdens have weighed her down thus far. Here, if you could come in a little so the camera can see you. We want everybody in the world to see what God's doing in your life today. Relationships. Yeah, take from here. Relationships. Oh, boy. Anybody ever have an external relationship problem? Whether it be family, whether it be children, a spouse, maybe a, a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Wow. Bullying. We're talking about external burdens. Business failures. The cost of living, right? Debt. Criminal records. Caring for others. Excessive red tape. What does that mean? Red tape. <laughs> You know, it's a burden. Immigration. immigration. <laughs> now, I understand immigration has a process and, not, and they have to do it. They don't know what crazy lunatics are coming from America. <laughs> like Nick Klein. But, you know... <laughs> like, Nick is like the least, you know, meanest guy you'll ever meet, okay? <laughs> but you, you think about it there's so many hoops we got to jump through. There's so many things we got to do sometimes, and it tires us. It weighs us down. Well, how you doing? Wow, I really like, I, I'd be willing to donate a lot of those shirts if you are drawn into it. In 
justice. Anybody ever felt like they didn't have justice? What about lack of education, lack of freedom, lack of finances, poverty? What about lost loved ones? What about bad grades? What about not achieving goals? What about poor working conditions, long hours of work, low salary, racism, safety, unemployment, breakups, criticism, friend, there are all kinds of burdens. That's okay. So, I want you to stop for a moment and come present yourself here. I have one last outfit. Oh, you're so fluffy. Now you know how I feel all the time. Okay, Casey, can you help her put on my shorts here? And then this last shirt. Internal and external burdens, friend. Okay, pull that shirt down. We want them to be able to read it. Okay, and... The hat says, 50 never looked so good. Odometer, 50. Here, can we get a picture? Somebody take a picture for me. I like this right here. Awesome. Well, I, it's a little warm outside, so if you want to go in the back and shed your clothes for a moment, that's so fine. Come on, give her a good hand clap. She's a runner. Interesting. Imagine. How are you going to run your race if you're weighed down like that? How are you going to run and be a witness for Jesus? Do you know how hard it is to share your faith with people when people could see your burdens on your face? She's not meant to wear somebody else's clothes. She's not my size, right? Look, some of us are trying to be like somebody else. And we're not learning how to walk with the Lord. And we're sweating all the time because these burdens tire us out. They wear us down. They make us ineffective. And we keep carrying them week after week and month after month and year after year. And the Lord says, I bore your burden for you on the cross. Every sin that could ever be committed, he made provision for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, listen. When you go to heaven, there's no check-in luggage. There's only carry-on. What are you talking about? Well, there is one thing that we're going to be able to take to heaven. Right here. I'll put this over here so... You see that right there, friend? Represents the secret place. It represents our quietness with the Lord. It represents obedience when nobody else is looking, Rose. It represents when you are opening the Word of God floor and you're praying over what God is speaking to you and tears fall down your eyes because you know the reality of His presence. That's what that represents. And here's the deal. When I get to heaven, there's nothing in that luggage that's going to be from this world, from this flesh. Everything in that luggage is going to be found in this crown right here. Everything. And I'm going to do what Steve Hill did with his crown when he went to go be with Jesus in 2014 on March 9th. Which is honestly the exact day that we're doing our Power Evangelism Conference this year, March 9th. Ten years. I think it's unique. You see, Steve presented 
his crown to the Lord. He wasn't perfect, but there were jewels. There were things that he did that nobody knew about. And yes, he was a public figure, but that wasn't his identity. He knew Jesus set him free from drugs, from alcohol, from perversion, from disobedience, from selfishness, from pride, from anger, from lust, from debt, from a poverty mentality. And God spoke to him. And he went to the nations. One time, honey, when I went to go visit, Casey and I visited Jerry Hill when she was still living in Alabama. We went and we were, went to meet with her. Jerry Hill's the wife of Steve Hill, the, the late evangelist of the Brownsville Revival. And as we met with her, she brought out a, a big banner. You know what it was from? The time that he was in India with your grandpa. And she opened it up and it was Steve on the picture with Yesu Padam and Dr. Michael Brown. You know what? I doubt anybody in America saw that banner. And I saw it after Steve had died. But see, that wasn't... Steve didn't bring that banner back in America and say, look how awesome I am. Look how powerful of an evangelist I am. And all these thousands of Indians that are, are coming to our meetings and getting touched by God. No. He kept going to be a witness for the Lord because his interest was Jesus and making him famous and honoring his name in the nations. Listen to these scriptures as I close. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 25. Do you not know that those who run a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win, that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we live for an imperishable crown. What are you living for? Don't allow burdens to be your identity. James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man or the woman who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Revelation 4, 9 through 11. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worships who lives forever and ever and casts their crowns down before the throne saying, you are worthy, Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Friend, I want to tell you something. I've got nothing in this world without Jesus. You've got nothing in this world without Jesus. And if you think you have something else and Jesus, you need to get rid of whatever it is that keeps you from Jesus. In closing, Psalm 55 verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. This crown... Some of you might remember me sharing this. Steve Hill used this crown during the Brownsville revival. He's preached a message that I would encourage you to go listen to called You Can't Have It. And he's talking about his crown. You can't have the price that he paid. You can't have what he worked for in the secret place. Oh, Steve could lay hands on you and you could feel the power of God. I could lay hands on you. Pastor Armin, Sierra can lay their hands on you and you feel the power of God. But here's the fact. Is that whatever you get in Jesus comes from your personal walk with Jesus. 
I remember praying one time when I was at the revival and going to the school of ministry. And I went one hour before the prayer meeting that was from 11 to 12. And from 12 to 4.30 would be classes. And then I would come back and eat something with Casey and Sierra, who was just an infant at the time. And then we would go wait in line at the revival. And the doors would open at 6 p.m. And then we'd get out at midnight. And we did that every day for the years that we were in Pensacola. And you never wanted to miss anything. And friend, I never wanted to miss my Jesus. I never wanted to miss spending time with God, lifting my voice to Him and crying out to Him in in such gratefulness for what He's done for me in my life. And we were so busy I don't even know how we did half of what we did. School, ministry, work, family. But we always found time to meet with Jesus. And I want to tell you, that was a season of our life that was amazing. But that season of my life and Casey's life is not our identity. Our identity is in Jesus. The Pensacola revival is over has been over for over 20 years. But Jesus has never left us or forsaken us. And I continue to seek him. And one day, I'm going to present this crown to him too. And I'm probably going to look on my right side and see Steve Hill standing there. Loved ones who've gone on to be with the Lord. Other great men and women of God. People who have been in that great cloud of witnesses cheering us on, saying, go, go, go. Friend, maybe nobody knows the burdens that you've been carrying. But I want to encourage you to exchange those burdens for a crown today. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, for this church and these people. They've heard me preach so many times. But Lord, I know that there's times when you speak to us with words that come from you. And I hope that every time we share up, whoever shares in the front here, it all comes from you. And I just sense, Lord, I was so gripped yesterday. And I'm gripped today, God, believing that there's something that you have to do to release people from burdens today, whether they be internal burdens or external ones. Jesus, you shed your blood. You took nails in your hands and your feet, a crown of thorns upon your head. You were whipped and beaten 40 times, God, with chips of bone and glass and that whip that shredded your back. You were probably dehydrated and hungry. You died naked upon the cross. You were shamed. You were laughed at by the Romans. The Jews said you were the false Messiah. And there your mother and John and maybe one or two others were weeping at your feet, wondering, is it over with? But it was only the beginning because your death produced resurrection. Today, Lord, I pray through our personal dying to self that you would produce resurrection life. Come on, in the name of Jesus, I just want you to look within your heart today. And friend, if there's anything between you and God, if there's any burden that you're carrying, I want you to take it off today. I want you to shed it before the cross. I want you to hang it up on the cross and nail it to the cross today and say, Lord, I don't want to carry this burden anymore. I belong to you. You belong to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're so grateful, Lord. Come on, friend, today. If you need a release of a burden, this isn't just for certain people. This is for everybody. I don't care what burden it is. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what your responsibility is. We all get weighed down by stuff at times. And my goal is not to just 
make you feel guilty today, but to see you be free from guilt, from shame, from fear, from control. I want you to learn how to walk in freedom today, friend. In your life, your marriage, your family, your work, everything you do, I want there to be breakthroughs. There are answers for those who wait upon the Lord. He said, we'll run and not grow weary. We'll walk and not faint. There is an answer for you today. Listen, if you want to give yourself to Jesus and give that burden or more to the Lord today, you know he's your answer. I want you to come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up. I want to give my burden to the Lord. I want to cast my care upon him because he cares for me. Won't you come? Just come up here to the front today. Thank you, Jesus.